within this tradition. So the second kind of approach or aspect of critical medical anthropology is that this idea that disease and treatment occurs within a capitalist world system. You might have already understood that from some of the comments that I made, including the idea of uh, a neo-Marxist kind of approach um, within critical medical anthropology, that part of the critique that it's building is that the capitalist context of society in general is something that produces rather than necessarily addresses or mitigates uh, diseases and particularly makes vulnerable people uh, that are of the lower classes or that are poor in society uh, much more much more vulnerable to epidemics of various kinds so this approach emphasizes um, how biomedicine and public health exist in a hierarchical system of resources and economic exchanges um, Western models are therefore held as the standard and dominate other systems in pluralistic settings. This is something that we've mentioned previously, that in pluralistic situations, biomedicine tends to be seen as the authoritarian, authoritative approach within pluralistic environments. Um, so it tends to kind of take over or force non-Western traditions to go underground. And corporate interests drive much of the global health policy and conditions that make certain people, especially the poor and the marginalized, ill. I think that's been clear in our discussion. So medical hierarchies exist in clinical and public health settings that replicate this stru structure and prevent dissent. This is another kind of approach uh, or perspective within uh, this second aspect of critical medical anthropology. So the third idea is that interventions or policies or programs or whatever it might be that we are trying to enact to address a particular public health problem um, needs to be approached from upstream. So this replicates what we were talking about at the beginning with upstream thinking. Um, this is the idea that you can't just talk about micro level or behavioral or individual kinds of approaches to public health, you have to think systemically and think about the factors that are contributing most to the structural vulnerabilities that people face um, and then address those. So one of the ways that, uh, it's another term that you will hear, maybe some of you have already heard, called structural violence. Um, and structural violence is a term that really was uh, created or defined most, I think, effectively by anthropologists was this idea that structure structures create violence in our lives, not just other immediate individuals. So for example, when we think of violence, we most traditionally tend to think of interpersonal violence, physical violence, or abuse of some kind, or someone being attacked. And this is not focusing on that kind of violence. It's talking about how systems or structures or economies enact violence or permit conditions of violence within communities. So it's trying to use, tack on this word structural in a way to modify it and tell us to think structurally, to think upstream when we think about how violence expresses itself in people's lives. Um, so uh, approaches within critical medical anthropology tend to not be traditional interventions. They tend to overlap with approaches such as community mobilization or health activism, um, sort of thinking of health as one desired outcome of larger scale change in a society. So people that take this approach often take more, um, put more emphasis on uh, collaborations and, and, and with activists and people within communities to move forward social agendas um, beyond just what we would normally see as traditional public health um, that might be kind of pie in the sky but in, in uh, institutions, elite institutions and not really grounded in communities. Um, and so this kind of approach to activism is exemplified in HIV AIDS, since we're using some of those examples um, from HIV AIDS, um, such as the treat Treatment Action Campaign, which was uh, an activist response to the HIV epidemic in South Africa that was community driven and that was uh, struggling to get access to medications that were available at that time uh, 
but not in South Africa because of the, the powers that, that were in existence at that time were resistant to um, HIV AIDS drugs in particular, the treatments that were available in the West and were critical of, um, of the, the Western influence on um, the global uh, treatments that were becoming available for HIV AIDS. But the result of that was that people with HIV were dying in, in by the thousands when there were treatments available. And so Treatment Action Campaign was a community mobilization response to that, which was led by people with HIV. Um, and then public health people of this kind of approach to critical medical anthropology joined forces to contribute to that uh, approach to try to change the access to medication in that environment, and it was successful. Um, ACT UP is a similar kind of approach in the U.S. context at the beginning of uh, the HIV AIDS epidemic in, with pe in which people with AIDS really pushed directly through direct action on the street um, and through dramatic protests. They pushed to get the government to recognize HIV AIDS and to even pronounce, to say the word HIV AIDS and to create uh, conditions for funding to be able to develop some treatments for HIV AIDS. Um, so these are some kinds of approaches that would be consistent with a critical medical anthropology framework. So with that introduction um, to CMA, let's talk about a couple of ways in which CMA is critical of some of the other traditions or theoretical approaches within medical anthropology. So previously we had talked about three approaches to uh, medical anthropology that were kind of three grand theories um, that uh, can summarize some of the ways that medical anthropologists approach their, their topics of interest. So those were political economy, you might remember, ecological approaches, and cultural or interpretive approaches. Um, so, as you might imagine at this point, a lot of people who practice this kind of approach to CMA are more akin to the political economic approach. So they're more akin to legal and policy kinds of approaches to addressing health conditions, um, and they emphasize issues of hierarchy, power hierarchies, uh, class hierarchies and societies, and social inequalities of various kinds. Um, so they tend to be critical of the two other theoretical approaches for different kinds of reasons. So I'll just uh, summarize why they're critical of those two other approaches. So they're critical of ecological approaches, which remember are influenced by evolutionary theory and tend to focus on environmental issues as primary in thinking about health conditions. People from the CMA approach, approach say that a focus on ecology neglects what they refer to as the unnatural history of disease. So they're uh, making a contrast here with an evolutionary approach which, fo with, which focuses on natural histories or natural selection, um, to use evolutionary language. Um, and they're saying, well, really, a lot of what is driving health conditions all over the world is unnatural. It's human-created. It's about human societies and societal hierarchies, the power hierarchies that they tend to emphasize, that, um, that are contributing most to the disparities in health conditions that we see in the world, not environmental context. So they're critical of those ecological approaches for that reason. Um, and then the second group that they're critical of is uh, those that use this kind of more belief-oriented the, the factors in our heads, in our minds, are the most important in understanding health and disease. Um, folks from the CMA perspective say, well, that assumes that explanatory models and disease experience are primarily in the head, rather than emerging from social and material inequalities and the capitalist system. So they're basically saying, well, you're assuming that these individual beliefs and behaviors and decisions that people make are the most important when actually it's these much larger scale concerns. Okay, so let me take a pause there before we move on to a specific case example of this approach to CMA um, that is based in Peru, which you had uh, the reading for this week out of your text on the Peruvian case study. So this will kind of apply the CMA approach to a specific context. So we'll do that in a moment. 